We bought an insect zoo. Help! Say, Susan is up to something today. Monkey shine. She and Ted are making an insect zoo, setting up the cages they'll need for their animals. For insects are animals, you know. Their union insists we mention that up front. All of them have six jointed legs, and none of them have backbones. Giant wusses, all of them. That's a katydid. He's a relative of the crickets and the grasshoppers. But do they ever call? Like all insects, his body is divided into three parts. A head, a thorax, or middle part, and the bootay. And an abdomen, or stomach. Abhuman? In his abdomen are some small holes called spiracles. Hey, hey buddy, that tickles. He his wings and his six legs all grow out from his thorax. Why don't you make a short? It'll last longer. Ted's making him a home in this lamp chimney cage. The katydid will eat those leaves. And every day or two, Susan will sprinkle in a little water for him to drink. Oh, gee, thanks. Don't put yourselves out on my account. Geesh. Here's the insect cage Ted's built for his pet cricket. That's the problem with privatized prison. Ted's cutting a piece of apple. He'll put it in the cage for the cricket to eat. His annual meal. I'm bored. Can we watch Paw Patrol? Crickets are the canaries of the insect world. Like their relatives, the katydids, they sing by rubbing their wings together. Just like a canary. Susan wants to look at him under Ted's magnifying glass. She immediately regrets it. Here he is, a black field cricket. He's young, but he's like an adult in almost every way except size. Oh, like David Spade. Say, look at that cricket's head. Whoa. There are his two antennae, or feelers. Just behind them are his big compound eyes, each one made up of many little parts. He has a curious kind of mouth, for his jaws don't as yours do, they work sideways. It's like a nightmare from hell, in a zoo! Put him in the sun, Ted. Hey, you want to be in charge so bad, get your own insect zoo. But look what Susan's taking out of that box. Homemade truck nuts? And look what's on it. Those little objects are the eggs of a butterfly. Since butterflies usually lay their eggs on the leaves their caterpillars eat, we're not surprised to find caterpillars here, too. I guess I never thought of it that a way. A caterpillar is a growing up stage in the life of a moth or butterfly. The caterpillar hatches from the egg and spends his time eating leaves. After a while, the caterpillar forms a chrysalis. From VTV the News? The chrysalis is a resting stage during which the animal changes into a beautiful butterfly. Or one like this. If Susan and Ted are lucky, they may see their eggs hatch into caterpillars. The caterpillars turn into chrysalises, and the chrysalises change into butterflies, like this one. By the way, do you know how to tell a butterfly from a moth? Ask its mom. Well, the best way is to look closely at the animal's antennae, or feelers. Those of a butterfly have knobs on the ends. Albert knobs. Those of a moth are straight, or sometimes fringed. Or bedazzled. Wonder what Susan's looking for in all that milkweed gloss. Careful, Susan, you'll miss it. Oops, you missed the jar that time. Ah, cool. Now I can put epic fail compilation on the thumbnail. But there we are, a milkweed bug. Susan found him on a milkweed bush. He is a true bug, too. Only those insects that can use their mouths for piercing and sucking may properly be called bugs, you know. Gross. Since he lives on milkweed, Susan puts him in a jar with some of his friends and plenty of his favorite food. Hey, these guys aren't my friends. They're suing me for fraud. Get me out of here. Ted caught some beetles this morning. Ladybird beetles. Mombazo. He found them on a plant that was covered with aphids. Ted finds trust and acceptance among the insects that he's never known among humans. Aphids, you know, are the little bugs that are a common garden pest. Look, gang, it's the common racist narrator. Jerk. The ladybird beetles eat them, doing man a great service. It's nature's own fear factor. You can usually recognize members of the beetle family by the two hard, shell-like covers that fit over their wings. And they have those trendy beetles haircuts, too. 
Susan is carrying Ted's ant house out for the zoo. Ted made it himself. A wooden frame and two pieces of window glass cut to size. Easy. Ants, of course, are insects, related to the bees and wasps. Red and black antennas waving, they all do it the same. Ted's ants have made themselves quite at home here, building tunnels, caring for their eggs and young, and getting food. Of course, Ted and Susan provide the food, a few grass or weed seeds, and even a small insect once in a while. When things get really desperate, they'll even feed them Del Taco. Ted's ants. Ted's ants, Ted's ants, Ted's ants, Ted's ants, Ted's ants, Ted's ants. Ted keeps a small sponge in the ant house too, moistening it with water so the ants won't go thirsty. Sometimes he pours Pepsi in there, no reason. But here's the... He eats other insects, and because he's always hungry, he's a real garden friend. In Jesus' name, amen. Susan keeps him as a pet, and she even feeds him an occasional moth or butterfly. A wonderful pet he makes too. He's quite tame, for he seems to know that Susan will take good care of him. This misplaced trust will be his undoing. Those little finger-like affairs around his mouth are palps. They help him eat and also serve as tasters. Gaze into the hellish maw of predation, kids. In a zoo. Ugh. Graphic content. Turn it off. Susan knows he's thirsty after his meal, so she gives him a drink of water from the eyedropper. Watch him take it. Hey, kid, I don't come down to where you live and film you eating your golden grams. And now, while our friend the mantis has his drink, let's take one more look at the animals in the zoo. We promised that this thing would be ten minutes long, but we're already out of interesting stuff. Here's the Katie did, with the six jointed legs all insects have. This is it, kid. I don't do anything else. The cricket, the canary of the insect world. And comedy critic. Almost any time during the late summer, you can find him around the house or in the backyard. Cute story. Like all insects, his body is divided into three parts. A head, a thorax, and an abdomen. Pronunciation. A beautiful butterfly. Susan has all four stages in its life. They send you here for life. And that's exactly what they take. The eggs, which hatch into caterpillars. Taste great on toast. The caterpillars, which eat and finally rest as chrysalises. And the chrysalis, from which there comes at last the adult butterfly. Look at me, I'm adulting so hard, LOL. Here's one of Susan's milkweed bugs. He's a real bug, too since he has the piercing and sucking mouth that only true bugs possess. So, Lindsay Lohan is a bug? Ted's ladybird beetle, eating the aphids, which are its favorite food. Ladybirds are members of the beetle family, the largest of all insect groups. And yet they can't be bothered to vote. Wouldn't you like to have an ant house yourself? You can build one, you know. Watching the ants as they go about their daily lives is wonderful fun. Lights down, you up and die. Finally, here's the prize animal in the whole zoo, the praying mantis. Believe it or not, he's a friendly insect, easily tamed, and he makes an interesting pet. He's also deeply religious, which plays well in the heartland. Bless this food to my body. Blah, 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 blah. Hunting for insects and finding them is fun. I mean... Few of them will harm you, but there are many books to help you learn which ones may not be safe to handle. So learn about insects. And then, like Susan and Ted, you too can have an insect zoo. <laughs> Hashtag bug life. Oh, okay. <laughs>